Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are going to be painting a watercolor hibiscus flower as well as I'm going to show you how to use masking fluid. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so today we're going to be painting a hibiscus flower and I thought I'd also touch on how to use masking fluid because I've been asked how to use it and what it's used for a lot. Um, and I don't think I've ever actually really addressed it. So we're going to be using this today. Basically masking fluid is this liquid that you can apply to your paintings where you want the paper to remain white. Um, so little highlights and details, especially in watercolor painting, because traditionally we don't use a lot of white paint in watercolor. Um, using this, you can still have those white details from the paper underneath by applying this, letting it dry, painting over, letting it dry and then lifting up the masking fluid and it reveals the white paper underneath. So I thought for today we would paint a hibiscus flower and use this for the stamen. So we're not going to leave it white, but because the stamen is a lighter color sometimes than the flower, instead of layering over, um, you can't really layer a light color on top of a dark color with watercolor because it's transparent. So I thought we would white out this area and then do it after. So I'll show you how to use this and yeah so let's get started i don't know if you guys can see there's a little bit of an outline because i already tried this and i had to erase it and try again so we're going to be using my etcher lab cold press watercolor sketchbook my windsor newton professional watercolors i have my emma lefave and craft mo brush in a size 12 round i'll probably use a smaller one as well my pencil eraser water paper towel and we're ready to go and my masking fluid also get a old brush that you don't mind maybe destroying um, for your masking fluid. There are some masking fluids that you can apply with like a little pen tip and stuff like that. For mine, I have to use a brush. This is an old Princeton snap brush. Um, and as you see, it is all chipped because I used to leave it in water. This is super old. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's that. All right, let's start with the drawing. I like to do my sketches really light, but when I first tried filming this, I did it dark so you could see it, ended up having to erase it anyway, um, and now there's pencil marks. So when you are doing your sketch, do it lightly. I'm going to try and do it darker so you guys can see it. Hopefully I won't have to erase it again. Um, but yeah, let's go. Okay, so it has five petals. I'm going to start with the bottom one over here. Okay, and this one's kind of coming down. And it has these kind of like curvy edges. I'm going to try not to think too much about it like that. And we're actually going to have the stamen coming up here. So it's kind of like this long stick thing. Okay, and it has these little things that come off the top. I'm so good with my words again today. And then they're going to have dots. We're just going to do that with the masking fluid after. We don't need to draw that. But that's the stamen part. I feel like this needs to be longer. So this is why you don't draw darker. Because <laughs> I'm going to have so many pencil lines under this because I'm drawing it darker. That's fine. It's all good. Okay, and then I'm going to do one coming out this way. Try not to think too much about this. One, two, three, and then one coming up behind, four, and then five. Okay, here is our flower. Still trying to erase my old sketch. <laughs> um, all right, so now we're gonna apply the masking fluid to the center so we can white out that area. So here, oh, it's dripping everywhere. I'm having a day, guys, I'm having a day. I've attempted this video a few times now and it's just not working out, but we're gonna make it work. Okay, so here's my masking fluid. I'm just gonna dip my brush in. Someone said if you dip your brush in dish soap first, um, it will protect your brush from the masking fluid, so it won't ruin it. So again, do not do this with your good brushes. Do not, because it could ruin it. I don't want to go and get dish soap and try it right now. So I'm just gonna 
risk ruining this brush because it's a really old one and it's okay. So I'm just doing the little lines. Now you don't want it too thin, your layer of masking fluid, because then it will be harder to lift up. Now I'm just going to do little dots like this. Okay, you don't want to do, um, yeah, so you don't want it to be too thin of a layer because it'll be harder to lift up. But you also don't want it too, too thick because then it won't dry or you might get impatient waiting for it to dry like I get impatient for <laughs> waiting to dry. I'm just doing little lines now. Just tiny little lines, not too much. It doesn't have to connect to everyone. Um, but yeah, so if you get too impatient and then you start painting over, and it hasn't dried, it's gonna go into your watercolor and it could ruin your painting. So you really gotta wait for this to dry. Um, so not too thick, not too thin, just like a, a decently, I don't know. Like you don't want it dripping everywhere. So I'm just gonna take it off my brush and I'm just gonna lift up some so it's not too thick. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now we gotta wait for this to dry. I'm just gonna dry that or wash that off in a different jar so it's not with my other paint. I don't know if you guys can see that. It did little dots. And wash your brush immediately so it doesn't get too ruined. I usually have a designated brush for my masking fluid because it's kind of like a glue Anyway, okay, so we're gonna wait for that to dry um, and then we will paint the flower. Um, in this point, you can, you know, do some leaves. Let's do some leaves. Okay, maybe I'll just... do a couple leaves here. I think they're kind of jagged. going to do the shape and then do the jagged edges and maybe a smaller one here like that I'm just going to erase the lines I don't need and we will come back when our masking fluid is dry one quick tip I do have for using masking fluid Test some out on your paper too to make sure it pulls up without ripping. This is how you take it up. But some papers will actually rip with masking fluid, so test your paper first. Okay, so now that our masking fluid is completely dry, you can tell just by touching it, it feels kind of like tacky almost, like a rubber, um, and nothing comes up when you touch it. So that's how you know it's dry. Now we can paint over it, and it will not paint any of that part that we put the masking fluid on. Okay, so also though, make sure not to scrub with your brush where it is because it will lift it up, so just be gentle. Okay, so now I'm gonna start by doing a light wash of pink all over my hibiscus. Start with a light wash. You can see I can paint right over that masking fluid and it won't do anything to what is underneath it. Okay, just a light wash to start. I'm making sure it's nice and wet because I'm going to go back in and do some shadows with some wet on wet while it's still wet. So that's why I keep dipping my brush in my water just to kind of um, spread out that, that light wash, making sure everything's still nice and wet. All right. Okay, so the hibiscus... As the petals kind of come in, it's darker down here. So I'm gonna grab some more of my pink, I'm just using permanent rose, and I'm just gonna drop the darker color, just kind of doing some lines towards the center, okay? I'm 
And because it's wet on wet, you're going to get kind of this like out of focus blurry effect with these lines. Just make sure that the lines are curving with the petal that it's touching, okay? So I'm going to wash that off just a bit. And I'm just going to blend out some of these lines just a bit. I don't want them too harsh. We're going to do some more shading lines after. I want it to blend out just a bit more. So I'm just using a damp, clean brush. Kind of blend out these lines. Okay, and then I'm going to go back in again with some more of my pink. Okay, and again, right towards the center. That's where there would be the most shadow. Again, just a couple of lines. always going towards the center because when you lift up your brush that is where the kind of color explodes and you want the most color to be right there okay so now I am actually going to add a little bit more deeper color by adding a tad bit of green I'm just going to grab a dark green to my pink and it's just going to make a really dark pink I'm just going to tap it a little bit there and just add it right at the center a bit more green Okay, and I'm just going to go along where the stamen is here, just for a little bit of shadow. Like it's casting a bit of shadow there. And you can even do some of those lines coming in, just very faintly. Like that. Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry, let's do some of the leaves. So I'm going to grab some sap green. I'm just going to mix it with whatever I have in here. And I'm just going to start by filling this in. Like that. Maybe a bit more around the edges and down the center bit more color I'm gonna grab a bit more of a darker green to go down the center and around the edges that and then this one over here now it's going to kind of blend into the one that it's touching but I'm going to just do a bit more detail on it after I'm not too worried about it right now okay and then some of the ones up here This one.
Okay, so now let's wait for this to completely dry and then we will do some more detail when we get back. Okay, now that that's dry, we can do a little bit more detail on our flowers. We're gonna separate some of these petals. So we're gonna work on one petal at a time. I'm actually gonna change the color a bit, making it a bit more peach. Um, so I'm just gonna grab my permanent rose here, grab a little bit of yellow, just a little bit, and I'm gonna do a wash over one of the petals to start. Okay, just starting with one petal at a time. Like so. Okay, and because this petal is behind this one, I'm gonna add a bit of a shadow right there. So again, just grabbing a bit more yellow and pink, and I'm just gonna add the shadow along this side, like that. And then I'm gonna have like just a little bit at the top here and there, okay? So this petal would be underneath this one, so it's having a shadow right there, okay. Now we're gonna work on another petal that's not touching this one um, so they don't bleed into each other, okay? So I'm gonna take some of that pigment off. I'm just gonna do a light wash over top. Okay, now this petal is underneath the same one as well, so we're gonna add that shadow right along this side. Okay, I'm just gonna mix a bit more of this color together. A little bit of green just to get a bit of a shadow color there. And then right towards the center here. And then we could add a little bit around the top, not too much. Just some lines coming down maybe. Like that. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry because we can't do this one or this one because they're both touching a petal that is wet. So we're gonna have to wait. Um, let's do the leaves while we're waiting. <laughs> um, we'll do this one because this one's touching a wet one. So when you're doing a more detailed um, floral, you wanna make sure to work in layers, number one, and two, um, give enough drying time, okay? So you don't want like certain petals to run into each other and bleed into each other. So you're gonna have to wait. So do one petal at a time. It's a bit, you need a bit more patience with this, but that's okay. Another way to get your shadow and then blend it out is you can create where you want the shadow to be like this, but see this harsh line, wash off your brush, dry it, and then just blend it out. Like that. So it'll be a little darker right there. Or you can just re-wet the whole thing with a light wash again, and then just tap the darker bit in where you need it. So I'm just putting a bit of a shadow there because the flower is in front. Actually, that's more of a shadow than we need, but I'll wash it off, dry it, blend it out. Maybe bring some of that darkness up the side. I feel like that dark part is a bit too dark. So I'm just gonna move it around a bit. You can do some lines if you like. I don't know if I like that. I don't know. We're just playing around, just seeing what works and what doesn't. So I'm just gonna blend it out. I don't know if I like those lines. <laughs> it's fine. Let's do this one because it's one. This one is actually kind of dry. I'm just gonna wet it all up. Okay, make sure it's not touching the petal that's a little bit wet. I grab my darker green, and then just tap 
where there would be a shadow behind those petals. Like that, maybe around the edge if you like. Like that. Let's do this one. Not too much detail on these. Okay, so here we have a leaf that's behind this one. So this one's going to be darker because it's underneath the petal and the other leaf. Um, so I'm not going to do too much to this top leaf. I don't want too much darkness on it because it's going to be lighter. So I'm just going to take some sap green and just do maybe couple veins with the sap green and then the other one will be more of like the perline darker green so there's more of a shadow okay we're gonna let that dry okay let's see we can do this one now because that's pretty dry actually no let's wait for it all to dry and then we can do our next petals okay so let's start with this petal I'm just gonna do a light wash over the whole thing I'm going to grab a bit more of the darker color, add it to the center here, a little bit to the top, maybe some lines coming down. Oops. I'm actually going to try and drag those lines up so it the color explodes at the tips. Like that. I feel like it can be darker over here. I'm going to just mix a bit more of the color more pink, get a little bit of green. It's almost like a brown. Okay, there's gonna be a bit of a shadow there. I'm just gonna blend it out. Like that. Like that. Okay, let's do this one. Actually, we could add a little bit of that darkness in here. So that stamen is kind of popping out. Okay, let's do this one now. Light wash. I just had a little panic attack that I didn't press record. We did, we're good. I was going to cry otherwise if we did it. Okay. It's happened before, my friends. It's happened before. So I'm going to make it nice and dark over here. And then bring some lines coming that way. Because we don't want to bring it that way because then once that we lift our brush up, it's going to, you'll get this. You'll get these little dots, right? So let's have the little bits of explosion going towards the center. And then around here and then we're gonna do the little bits of explosion towards the tips I'm just doing some lines like that a little bit more green to get that brown okay okay and then our last petal, this is a little bit wet, but it's okay. We're still gonna go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to touch it too much. I'm just wetting it all up. And we're gonna take our shadow color. Again, just making a bit more of that. A little bit of green. I'm bringing those lines towards the center. And then I feel like that dried fast. Around the edge of it. I 
like that. It's a little too light and it's kind of a bit streaky, so I'm just going to blend it out a bit. Dry it off my brush just so that I'm not adding a lot of water. Because if you have a lot of water on your brush and you go back in, um, you'll get those watercolor blooms. So always make sure to dry off your brush. I'm just going to do our shadow because this petal is underneath both this petal and this petal so there would be more of a shadow. I'm going to wash it off, dry it, and then just blend out these shadows a bit more so it's not too harsh of a shadow. Oops. And sometimes you go over the lines. <laughs> it's okay. This is why I feel like I'm better or more comfortable with loose florals. I just, I like to move fast and sometimes I make more mistakes or I'm not as careful. Okay, there we go. I'm just going to add a bit more darkness behind here just so it looks like it's kind of, there you go. Okay, and then let's do this leaf before we take off our masking fluid, we let it dry and then take off our masking fluid. So I'm just gonna grab some pearling green, not pearling green. Oh yeah, well pearling green. So make it darker because it is underneath the petal and the other leaf. So it would be darker. There would be a shadow being cast by this petal and the leaf on top. Okay, so grab a little bit more darker green like that I'm just gonna a little vein here while it's dry. Vein on this one while it's dry, not too, too much. Like that. And like that. Okay, let's wait for this to dry now and then we'll come right back. Okay, now that it's all dry, we can take up our masking fluid. Do this carefully and slowly. Um, you don't want to rip your paper. You don't want to smudge your watercolor. It should be dry, but still just be careful. Um, nice and gentle. Hope it doesn't rip. And you're just going to use your fingertip to kind of peel it back. See that white? Just gently, gently, gently. And there we go, there is the center. So now we can paint the center. Okay, so the center is a bit more, um, it depends on which flower it is. Some are a little bit lighter, some are a bit darker. Um, I don't know, but I need to clean up these lines just a tad. So I'm gonna take my small size two, my size two round, just wetting it up. Again, gonna make some more of that dark shadow color, a little bit of green, and I'm just going to go along the edge because it, it was hard to get the tiny, tiny lines that I needed with the masking fluid. So I'm just going along just to make it a little bit sharper and clearer. Okay. little lines like that okay then I'm gonna do a light wash of that color oops lighter <laughs> like this so it's nice and light almost like maybe a peachier version of it like that and then the little I would like say like spokes at the top are a bit darker pink
like that. And then these are all yellow. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker as it gets kind of further in there. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more darkness shadow at the bottom here. Like that. And then this is the reason why we kind of used the masking fluid because we want these to be like a bright yellow. So I'm gonna grab some cadmium yellow and I'm just gonna fill in these dots, maybe leaving a little bit of the white, just so they look like little highlights. Just kind of doing dots and then some lines. So I'm not covering the white completely. I have a little bit of white there, just so they look like little highlights or something. Little lines like that. See? I'm gonna grab a little bit of this color. Maybe do some lines, maybe some dots, a little bit of contrast. Like that. Oops. I think I'm gonna wait for it to dry too, and I'm gonna do um, a little bit more detail. So while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm actually gonna take my size two brush and I'm gonna do just a little bit of detail on some of the petals. So a light wash of this color. And I'm just going to do some sharper lines. Now, because this is dry, these lines are gonna remain a bit sharper, right? They're not gonna blend like the last time when we were working on a wet surface. color, a little bit of yellow in there. I don't want it too dark. I just want it to look like they have a little bit of texture to the leaves or to the petals. <laughs> that. That's good. All right, now I'm going to go back in a bit more of the darker pink and just add oops, some lines. And some dots just so And there we go. There is our hibiscus flower and that is how we use masking fluid. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.